Yes, well, um, I think the idea that there are terms of trade, they're set through um, the collaborations between the guilds and uh, generally led through Screen Producers Australia and Matt Diener will talk about that, I think, later today. So when we talk about a licence fee being of a certain um, amount, that will be because um, Screen Australia is reflecting what the terms of trade are that are agreed. And all of these things are kind of coming out of policy um, to do with negotiations with government and with the broadcasters. And um, those terms of trade aren't quite the same in the theatrical world where I spend a lot of time working. But um, that means, uh, for me, a lot more freedom because when I'm working with a broadcaster, I have a commissioning editor often or some sort of executive producer who's going to have some input in terms of the content. And uh, in the case of the ABC or SBS, there's the um, difficulty of having a polemic, um, an essay, where you might want to take a point of view. And because of their very serious concerns with balance, quite rightly, as a public broadcaster, it means that I might have a lot of trouble for some of the films that I get involved with. Um, financing them through that model. So that's why I will take um, a more difficult uh, road, um, not, they're all difficult, let's face it, but end up with a um, finance plan that may be, um, you know, have a lot of unusual um, uh, investors involved because I have the freedom creatively to take on um, something different through uh, not having a gatekeeper such as a broadcaster um, telling us, oh, I mean, they won't, they give you freedom, but it depends on what project it is, I think. Okay, so what I've found here is um, a television um, finance plan in um, my repertoire of a film we did some years ago. Um, but because of the budget size and the fact that it's a very simple finance plan, it's not one of these very complicated ones that I was just mentioning, I thought it would be really in interesting for us all to go through it. Um, it also involves producer equity, the PEP program. How many people are familiar with PEP, P-E-P? -E okay, so, you know, I haven't done um, very much television financing in recent years, so I'm assuming that the PEP program is still yep. the same. So um, rather than have a producer equity um, that comes out of either the television offset of 20%, or the theatrical offset of 40%, which is what I traditionally use, meaning there's 40 cents in the dollar of everything that's a qualifying legitimate expenditure that the government will give you back in tax as a rebate. So the more simplified way that Screen Australia has come up with as a solution for smaller budget films, um, such as this documentary for $375,000, is something called Producer Equity Program Grant. And it basically equates to um, around 20% of your qualifying production expenditure. But it's a one-off flat fee um, an amount that you don't have to actually um, go through your budget very carefully as you do, and, and I think Sharon will take us through that later, in terms of QAIP, Qualifying Australian Production Expenditure and look at every single item in your budget. And, um, you know, that can be many, many, many items and get the 40% or the 20%. And um, that's going to change every time you change the budget. The, um, the amount you're going to get back as a rebate will change. This very simplified finance plan means it's a one-off amount, roughly around 20%, and you can't vary it. So if, for example, this budget went up to four or $500,000 accidentally, sometimes things happen like that, you suddenly get a new investor in, it's not going to improve as um, it ought to at 20% and go up to a higher amount. It will stay at that fixed $75,000, meaning 20% of what the original budget was. So that's the negative of it, that it won't change. In the case of Frackman, for example, we started off with I don't know, maybe an eight or nine hundred thousand dollar budget, and ended up with something closer to one point three. So that meant that the government rebate went up by a considerable amount of money over the time that we made the film. Because when you go into the um, uh, the process of making a film, you start with a provisional certificate for your finance plan um, and budget, 
And then you go for your final certificate at the very end of the process. And if your film's been going for two or three years, as it does often with a documentary, the amount of money that the government's going to give you at the end of the time is far greater than what you, than what you anticipated at the beginning of that journey. Am I making sense here? So, it, it, you know, your 40% of $800,000 is a lot less than 40% at $1.3 million. So you've actually got a significant amount of more free money, if you like, from the government because your budget went up. That's not gonna happen in this sort of framework, but the certainty is something very useful also if you know what your budget is and it's gonna stay at that budget and you don't have to go through the complication of this quape. You know, we almost need a, a mathematical degree, I think, on some level sometimes to try and analyze quape. So this is the simplified version, PEP. So we started off with, on the table before we start, for this finance plan to finance $375,000, with $75,000 coming from the government as a grant, and that's through the tax system. Then we move to the pre-sale, which triggers the whole financing. So without the pre-sale from Studio, in this case, which was the old arts um, channel on Foxtel, Without that $50,000, we wouldn't be able to get the $75,000 PEP because part of the regulation to get the tax rebate is that we have a legitimate broadcast pre-sale. There it is, $50,000. And so that means um, the Australian marketplace is putting in $50,000 in advance to buy the rights to your film to run it so many times over a period of time. Um, and uh, Victoria, I think, will tell us a little bit about that sort of deal later on. So we go, f oh, can we go down to the international. So um, Helen mentioned a um, sales agents um, who were going to sell rest of the world. Traditionally, you'll see ROW, ROW, on lots of agreements. In this case, it's Films Transit, which is a highly reputable um, arts uh, sales agency based in Europe or uh, and in Canada and they have put up $10,000 as an advance in order to um, help us finance the film. So this is the finance plan and so far we have um, 30 plus above $75,000. On the side um, we've got the percentages so we've up to about um, to probably about 40% 40, uh, 40 at this point. I can't see the top percentages. So then we are still 60% short of our total of $375,000. And this spreadsheet, by the way, is available online through Screen Australia. So you can download one of these spreadsheets and fill it in and you can play with it because um, they're usually in some sort of Excel um, uh, way and, and as you say, well, you know, maybe I can get $20,000 from the rest of the world um, and so then you might need less from the pre-sale or less from one of the agencies. Um, anyway, so carrying on with the finance plan, we're getting down to the government agencies. Now, because you've got the pre-sale, Screen Australia is able to put in some money into your budget. And because Screen Australia, in fact, all the agencies now under a certain amount of money um, give you a grant rather than um, uh, become an investor in your project, that means that that money, that $60,000, along with your PEP, becomes a certain amount of equity in your project that now belongs to you as the producer. To leverage as you will, you may want to bring in um, a special writer that's gonna enhance the prospects of the film. You might be able to do a deal on some of that equity with that writer so that they will eventually own some of your film more than they might have got just on points from being a, you know, an AWG member as a writer. This is this leverage idea I'm talking about. So then getting down to Screen Queensland, now they would put in that amount of money as a grant. And again, that improves your ownership of the project. And um, further down again, we've got, um, well, as you've seen, the um, producer equity is there is $75,000. So all up, we're getting to two hundred and thirty-five thousand, or sixty-two percent. And let's go down further again. Um, we are short something like twenty-one percent to get that film financed. So what in this particular case, we went out to who's going to benefit from this film? I know post-production houses love work. They like paid 
work. And uh, where we're going to spend probably something like 150, generally about a third of the budget in post-production services. So what post-production house might want to come in and do a deal with us so that they put in some money into our film in, in kind, they're going to get the work anyway. So they're going to go forego some payment on their post-production spend of something like um, $150,000 or less, $120,000, they're going to give us $50,000 of that gratis. And they will have to give us an invoice for that, and they'll be taxed on that invoice, but it will make the difference between us being able to make the film or not, and them getting work from us or not. And then maybe there's another company, in this case I think it might have been um, cameras um, somewhere in the vicinity, um, and, and other sort of, it might be an animation deal. So that way we get together the 100% and we've got a finance plan that works and that's going to be approved by the agencies. You can't have deferrals if you're using the offset and technically the PEP program is still part of the offset, but you can do investments, equity positions. So they will get a return if you with and your writer own a certain amount of money um, and the deal that you do with these people is, for example, investment rather than a grant, they might benefit in any returns of the film as well. I always think about anything. Who's going to benefit the most out of this? Who do I know who really likes this topic? Who do I think, um, in terms of their career, would benefit from taking this project? And who will fight for this project more than somebody else? There's a board meeting coming up at Screen Australia. They're going to make decisions about various projects. This person loves this project. I've done my research. I know this person has loved every movie about this topic in the past. I'm going to go to that person. They happen to be in Screen Queensland. All right, I'll go to Screen Queensland first. You need to work out who your champions are and bring them with you on the journey.